Hey guys, welcome back to Tack and Track. I'm Brad. And I'm Gil. Today we're going to be talking about the Magnum Research 1911. So this is a full five inch full size 1911 government model. This is a little bit older model. They're basically made exactly the same today, but this one's got the big bold desert eagle down the side. Um, not a particularly big fan of that. I don't understand why it's on there at all, but overall pretty good gun. We're going to talk about it in detail. It is a full size 1911 N45. We've talked about some others like the Dan Wesson here on the table. Mm -hmm. Really pretty straightforward 1911. One of the things that we do see here is a really extended oversized beaver tail back here on the back. It is a fairly good looking gun. And like all the guns that we talk about here on Tack and Track, we're going to cover five categories with it. We're going to talk about value, ease of use, fun factor, reliability, and accuracy. So let's talk a little bit about value. These come in at an MSRP of about $930. You can find them for sale in about the $820 to $850 range. Mm -hmm which puts them as pretty affordable for a 1911 that's a pretty good quality. One of the things that you'll see immediately when you look at this particular firearm is it's had the sights upgraded. Yeah. They come with pretty poor sights from the factory and for a gun that shoots as good as a 1911, it's certainly something that you're gonna want a quality sight on. It's gonna make all the difference in the world. Gil, you took a look at the finish on this gun compared to the Dan Wesson on the table. What do you think? You can tell the difference between the price point in these two guns by looking at the finish. This looks more blued. You can see the striations in the metal um, where the Dan Wesson has a very flat matte finish that has held up incredibly well. I've put this in and out of a holster a thousand times and there's very little signs of wear on it. I know you've had this one for a long time and it's probably been a little bit rough on it, but it doesn't look like it's held up quite as well as some of the more expensive 1911s will. Yeah, so that's that's my biggest gripe um, with this guy kind of as I went through it, is the finish hasn't held up particularly well. That's not the end of the world. You can always go back and refinish one. Um, check out my AR up here on the wall. You can get crazy with it if you want. You can always go back and refinish something. It is kind of disappointing in the $800 price point to have to refinish it and have to put new sights on it. That being said, I still think it's pretty good value. I do too, and it, it shoots well. It functions properly. Um, I didn't have any problems out of it when I shot it. I know you've put a ton more rounds through it than I have, uh, but it seems to operate well. It's a fairly smooth action. Um, and it is a little bit heavier than the Vigil, so there is a little less felt recoil out of that one. Uh, but the, the slide really felt pretty buttery smooth to me. Yeah, so with all that being said, we're going to give this a value score of 4.2 out of 5. It's a little bit cheaper than some of the other 1911s out there, but I feel like it could use a few upgrades as far as the sights and the finish quality goes. The next category that we always talk about is ease of use. Guys, it's a 1911, 1911. Yeah, I mean. right? Um, we've said this before on other 1911s. They do require a little bit of paying attention. They're not quite as easy to take down as some of the plastic wonder guns. Um, but with that being said, they're pretty easy. They're pretty simple to maintain. Um, one thing I would point out on the Magnum Research, the Dan Wesson's actually this way too. The safety is only on one side of the firearm. Mm -hmm. um, it would be nice to see it on both sides, um, like what we see with this guy here. But overall, very easy gun to use, very easy to maintain and take down. And because you can walk into any gun store, any shooting range in the entire country, and someone can help you with these. That's right. There's a lot of them out there, super easy to use. And they'll all ask you, is it 45 or 10 millimeter? I still don't know the difference. <laughs> I didn't shoot 45. So, the next category we always talk about with a firearm, fun factor. 
Gil, you shot this thing. Fun factor. I mean, it's got it. it all 1911s do, but this is no different. Um, you go out there, you run 10 rounds through it at a time, unless you got the extended mags. Uh, you spend a little more time reloading something like that versus one of those high capacity plastic guns, but you don't get the joy out of a plastic gun that you get out of a 1911. Because 1911s came from an age of craftsmen. Uh, we'll talk about it when we talk about the custom 1911, but really these are, are high craftsman guns. They're a blast to shoot. Uh, the triggers are incredibly buttery smooth on all 1911s. Um, even your cheap 1911s have better triggers than some of your polymer wonder guns out there. And there is something to the iconic look. There absolutely is. And it was, it was used in service for the United States military from 1911 to 1985, I think. And some they, still carry it today, I'm they, sure. Yeah, there's still a few around. Um, it's been, you know, phased out mostly, but there's still a few of them around. And there's a reason a gun sticks around that time. Um, you know, one, you could lose a world war, but um, you know, these are really, really good guns. They're a lot of fun to shoot. And so we're gonna give this 1911 a fun factor of four out of five. Yeah, and it's well deserved. So let's talk about reliability. Um, all 1911s, most 1911s, do pretty good in the reliability factor. Uh, we've talked about how marked up this one is, how long I've had this. I've put a whole lot of rounds through this thing. Like, a lot. Um, probably in the neighborhood of 4,000. Um, it, it's really been something that I've shot quite a lot. It's very enjoyable to shoot, so put a lot of rounds down it. I've never had any issues. Yeah, I mean, with with properly made 1911s, you rarely do. This is no exception again. Um, one thing that I do feel like you're going to find in this 1911 and other 1911s in this price point is their tolerances aren't as tight as maybe something like a Dan Wesson or something like a custom built 1911. While that may hurt them a little bit in the accuracy department, it will help them absorb some more dust, dirt, and debris before they start to malfunction. But this has been an exceptionally re reliable firearm for as long as I've had it. Um, Gil, have you ever had any issues out of this? No, absolutely not. Every time, uh, you know, we'll often swap guns just to experience something different and it's always a joy to shoot and neither of us ever have any problems out of it. We're going to give it a reliability score of 4.5. Certainly more reliable than a GoPro. <laughs> Definitely more reliable than a GoPro. So we always talk about accuracy when we talk about firearms here on Tack and Track. This has really not been a disappointment to me at all. No, I mean, 4,000 rounds through it. How many failure to fire? How many failure to eject? Absolutely zero problems. It's been accurate the entire time I've had it. Um, with that being said, one of the things I did do to this that helped a lot with the accuracy is I did upgrade the sights to fiber optic sights from the standard sights that came on this. The standard sights that come on these um, really struggle to get uh, to get a good sight picture from. They're not great. Um, and with that being said, and we're talking about accuracy, 1911s do great. This is a fantastically accurate firearm. But let's take a second to compare it to some other 1911s. Um, when we're comparing it to the Dan Wesson here on the table or the custom 9mm, trigger's a little bit heavier. Trigger's a little bit heavier, not quite as clean of a break, but still very adequate. Um, it's, it's, it's hard to say that it's bad, because it's not, it's great. It's just maybe not as good as some of the others. With that being said, don't forget though that the Magnum Research 1911 is $400 cheaper yeah. than the Dan Wesson. So is it as accurate as the Dan Wesson or the custom uh, build here? No. Is it more accurate than almost any plastic wonder gun out there? Probably. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it certainly performs well at its price point in terms of accuracy. Can't say I'm disappointed with it. 
Um, I know there's a Glock 17 owner out there that is throwing a fit on his custom Glock 17. Yes, there are some polymer wonder guns out there that will shoot with this guy, but not a disappointment at all. We're gonna give it an accuracy score of 4.2 out of five, which is really quite impressive because it's not terribly expensive. Yeah, I mean, for a nice 1911, $800 really isn't that bad. You can spend a ton of money on a 1911 if you want to. You don't necessarily need to, to get a fantastic firearm. Yeah, if you've never shot a 1911, you're thinking about buying one. Um, this is a good entry point into the 1911 world. It's not going to set you back a ton of money, but it's not going to leave you with a bad taste in your mouth for 1911s. Um, there's some $400 1911s out there. Might not be the best entrance into the world of 1911s. But I think this overall is a very good gun to bring you into the 1911s. And Overall, a good gun to buy. I, I know me and Gil kind of differed on what we bought in 1911s, but would you have been disappointed if you would have bought this? I don't think so. Say $400, you still get a really good gun. If I had never held this one before and shot it, I'd be absolutely thrilled with that one. Having held this one, I do prefer it, but it's it's only slightly better in every way. It's not, it's not a huge amount better. Uh, so you, you always get what you pay for, but you're still getting a lot of value out of that gun. A lot of fun. It's accurate. I mean, great firearm. So setting aside capacity, right, which, which is a big factor here. Sure. How would you feel about owning and shooting one of these versus, say, a Smith & Wesson M&P or a Glock 17 or the SIG P320? Which would you rather shoot? Uh, I'd rather shoot that. Now, I've, I've, I've got an M&P by the bedside table just because I have three high-capacity mags that go with it. And it's got better night sights on it than this one right here. But uh, I'm always going to choose a 1911 in terms of fun over anything made of plastic. Uh, there's something about that weight in your hands. There's something about how smooth the slide is, how crisp the trigger is, that just makes a 1911 so much fun to shoot. Fun well, to own too. It's interesting that you brought that up because I too I keep a Glock 34 by my nightstand with the larger capacity magazines, not this guy. But when we go shooting, the first thing we always pull out, 1911s. Yeah. If we get stuck on a dueling tree because uh, we were arguing about something and we had to settle it, we're going for the 1911s. <laughs> I mean, it's just a great gun and one that we both really enjoy. It's incredibly comfortable in the hand. I don't know. So overall, the Magnum Research 1911 is a fantastic firearm for the budget. Really, no complaints here. Besides the sights and the finish quality could be a little bit better. Um, one thing I will note about the older ones, like this particular one. Wh why do I need Desert Eagle written down the side of this? Um, I've got a Desert Eagle. This isn't a Desert Eagle. I Guys, quit. Quit. Branding it. If anyone's seen the movie Snatch, they know why it's got it written down the side, but I'll have to get Brad to watch that later. Yeah. I apologize for his ignorance. Uh so, back with the final score after a little bit of math here. <laughs> the Magnum Research 1911 comes in an overall score of 4.08 out of 5, which is quite a good score. That's a great score, and at that kind of price point, I really don't know if you can beat it in the 1911 world. I mean, I think it's a great choice. So guys, we got some video of us coming up shooting this. Uh, you can watch me beat Gil on a dueling tree. Coming up. Yeah, with some clever editing, I'm sure you can. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for joining us on Tack and Track today. Please don't forget, like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time.
is by nine millimeters. 